The government and the bankers are terrified that the American people may be waking up a little bit faster than they were hoping. Big new step, looking to build a huge database of people's physical characteristics. The FBI is taking on a billion dollar project to gather fingerprints, palm patterns, even digital pictures of faces. Eventually, it could expand to include iris patterns, face shape patterns, scars, even information about how you walk and talk. It's called biometrics, and it could change the face of law enforcement. That's the number on the watch. Good morning to you, and about 180 new laws were passed this past session. About a dozen or so. Critics say the Department of Homeland Security document unfairly paints military vets as right wing extremists. Here at home to tell you about the Department of Homeland Security tonight, telling law enforcement agencies that homegrown right wing extremist groups are growing. They're gaining strength, according to the report, by exploiting fears about President Obama's race, as well as fears about the economy. Almost 5,000 strong, the brigade is based at Fort Stewart, Georgia, under, quote, the primary purpose of this force is to provide help to people in need in the aftermath of a WMD-like event in the homeland, so that were they called to support civil authority, those governors or local state jurisdictions that might need our help, that they would be responsive and capable in the aftermath of an event like this, end quote. On Capitol Hill, questions about how the Pentagon determined that a thinly stretched military with two conflicts underway could spare these troops. Infantry brigade is designed to engage an enemy with maximum effective force and destroy it. That's not the sort of thing anybody wants to see in, in the streets of the United States. We're in a fascist economy right now in terms of, of the reason things are the way they are. Fascism should more properly be called corporatism, and that is when corporations and the government are in league together together to basically exploit the common people, to extract wealth from them, uh, to basically grind them down into poverty and, and grab all the goodies for themselves. So basically, all or most of you engaged in all or at least some of the activities that actually created this crisis in my opinion. But basically, you come to us today on your bicycles after buying Girl Scout cookies and helping out Mother Teresa, telling us, we're sorry, we didn't mean it, we won't do it again. Trust us. Government is now in hock $546,000 per household. You're never going to be able to pay it off in obligation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, just moments ago on this floor, there was cheering, there was clapping over the passing of the crap and trade bill. And it's a little tough to get 
excited. You know, from a political standpoint, I should be overjoyed because I really believe in my heart that when the American people find out, and this is just a, a part of it, when they find out what has been done to them, they are going to be livid and they're going to throw some people out of this body. I just know that'll happen. But I care more about America than I do politics. And I know that we'll be facing the single moms that heard from last summer. They can't afford the gasoline bill. They can't afford the propane. You didn't do a great thing. You hurt some really decent families struggling, trying to make it. And this is going to be their death knell. It breaks my heart. I go back. They're bankrupting the nation with these rescue plans, these buyout schemes, cap and trade, play cash for clunkers, you name it. What can Americans do if they are opposed to the road that the government officials are, are bringing us down? But the people really don't have a choice. There is no ballot box. You know, I'm of Italian descent, and I've heard enough mafia stories for the rest of my life. If you want to look at a mafia, you could call it the Republican and Democratic Party. the Obama administration is unprecedented with these rescue schemes, bailout plans, the takeover of major corporations, on and on and on. So yes, it has been going on a long time, but it's accelerating now at a level that makes our country that used to be the empire of entrepreneurial opportunity, now just the country to save the too big to fail. The result of the swift aggressive action we took in the first few months of this year. We've been able to pull our financial system and our economy back from the brink. We took steps to restart lending to families and businesses, stabilize our major financial institutions, and help homeowners stay in their homes and pay their mortgages. We also passed the largest and most sweeping economic recovery plan in our nation's history. These shoots that they think they see don't reflect any genuine uh, economic growth. They reflect the initial reaction to the stimulus. Now, if you shoot somebody up with heroin, you're going to get some type of reaction before there is a withdrawal. security group called the Q Group. Uh, its headquarters are within the National Security Agency headquarters in Fort Meade, Maryland. However, the group also uh, works closely with uh, FBI counterintelligence officers as well as uh, something I learned recently, uh, local police department intelligence units. So it's a uh, very large group, about a thousand agents and informants employed by this secretive agency within a secretive agency, the NSA. It's really answerable to, to no one uh, on paper, of course. How is the more liberal Obama administration dealing with this then? Unfortunately, we've seen no change. Uh, the surveillance conducted by the Q group at NSA continues. I've witnessed it myself uh, quite recently. Uh, uh, there's been no effort to curtail this organization. Unfortunately, NSA's power is growing because the Obama administration is now giving them power, new powers to uh, conduct surveillance in cyberspace. Uh, uh, they're uh, placing the cyber command under the control of the National Security Agency. So, no change actually. Uh, uh, the powers uh, of the NSA are expanding greatly under President Obama. I think they're gearing up against a possible revolt, but I'm pretty sure their 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 ideal would be that we, the American people, will just knuckle under and surrender completely, and they won't have to go to that open force in the streets. Because the instant the guns start firing in the streets of America, uh, it, the rest of the country is definitely going to wake up. I think they're still convinced that they can complete the encirclement and enslavement of America without having to fire a shot, and that that is their ideal. Because once the shooting starts, then all the pretext and all the illusion is gone completely. We're going to see food riots, tax protests, 
farmer rebellion, student revolts, squatter diggings, homeless uprising, tent cities, ghost malls are already popping up, general strikes, board snappings, kidnappings, and mob rule. I think we are coming up on a point where we're going to see violence in the streets of America, and I don't like it, but I don't see any way to avoid it at this point.